It's a dead man's life. There are many living people who want to see God. You can't see God on your life. You can only see God when you die. Ladies and gentlemen, the living will never be afraid of the living. The living is only scared of the dead. No matter how good your friend is, tomorrow when you sleep and you wake up and somebody is knocking your door and it's your dead friend, you run because he's dead. When he was alive, he was your good friend. When he dies, you run from him. When you become dead, the devil will run. When you become dead, people will run. When you become dead, your outcome will be different. When you become dead, the results will be different. My prayer is that God will kill your innermost being and bring alive the spirit of God inside of you. Are you hearing me, somebody? Dead men can be sick. Dead men can fail. Dead men can lose. Dead men can cry. Dead men cannot be embarrassed. Dead people, my God, I feel something right here. May God bring something alive inside your spirit. Receive the anointing today. There are men and women of God right here. You will live from here with fire. You will live from here with the anointing. You will live from here with a supernatural grace. My God, I feel an unusual unction coming upon somebody right now. Whatever men couldn't do in your family, I see an oil coming upon you. I see fire coming upon you. I see grace coming upon you I feel the power of the Holy Ghost right now receive strange oil receive strange fire receive the supernatural power eyes have not seen ears have not heard neither has it entered into the heart of men what God is about to do there is a mind blowing miracle there is a barrier breaking miracle I see you moving forward I see you breaking the limit I see you prevailing. You are more than a conqueror. You are a survivor. In your family, receive the unction. In your house, receive the unction. I declare today, the fire of the Lord is coming upon you. May your eyes open. May your spirit open. May your ears open. I decree the power of prayer upon your life. The mantle, Kadabahanda, Rado, Sadabahadia, Rabakoni Iba Sanda, receive the fire. Hey, Maraba Sanda, Ratoni Ikolobo Sanda. Somebody say fire. Somebody say fire. Friends, if we can pray, sit down. Things will happen. Praise the Lord. If we can pray, things will happen. Prayer is the ultimate key. Amen. Prayer. 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 I believe in all the tactics. I believe in the strategy. I believe in everything. I always have a problem with my church leaders because they always want to see things. Uh, what's the budget? What's the strategy? What are we doing? I, I don't have all those. I don't know what the budget is. I've never done anything in ministry with budget. Because everything I've ever done, if you ask me budget, I don't know. I always start with zero with faith. <clears throat> are you hearing me, somebody? Zero with faith. We started City of Faith Ministry 2010. And when we started City of Faith Ministry, the first building we went for, the man said, well, it's, 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 it's an event hall. So when you hire it for a day, it's 1,500. And the man said to me to come and meet him. And when I met the man, he said, how many times a week do you want to use? I said, twice a week. He said, 3,000 pounds per week. I said, amazing, that's good. And I looked at the man and I said, every time you rent out, it's 1,500. I shook his hand and I said, but I don't need it for just one day I want to use this place to worship God and so I need it 24-7 and that's how we started and the man said well if it's 24-7 twice a week for the month you have to calculate and let me know the figure now at that time I have 12 members our offering was less than 80 pounds so even if the man should take one meeting's money 1,500 the offering cannot I was teaching. I stopped teaching. And when I stopped teaching, I said to the Lord, if you really called me, let me clear this account. And so I started ministry with zero account. There was no balance that you could say that is because of the teaching. I had come 
to the ministry with a zero balance. I have 12 members who are not even permanent members yet. They come as and when. Are you hearing me, somebody? And the year God gave me a word, and the Lord said, This year the ministry will grow, it's going to be amazing. And that day, God gave me the message. It was Wednesday, and Sunday we got to where we used to worship. It was an Anglican church, and the Anglican vicar said, You cannot meet here again. From today, we are sorry, you cannot meet here again. I'm coming from Belgium with a prophetic word. The Lord has spoken to me, the church is going to grow. I got to the meeting place, it was locked up. The four people were standing at the entrance, and they said, Pastor, the vicar said, We can't meet here again. I said, Because God is giving us a bigger place. Where I don't know it yet, but I know there is a bigger place. Are you hearing me, somebody? Ladies and gentlemen, the following day, I met this man that says it's an event hall. He's a Muslim. When I went to the office, he's smoking and he's standing and reading and smoking. I looked at him and I said, We want this place. And he said, 1500 per use. And I said, Yes, sir, but we want it all over. And he said, How long? I said, We want it permanently. And he said, How much are you going to pay? I said, Well, how much? He said, 1500 per, per use. I looked at him and I said, I want to use your building to serve God. And the man put his head on the table. He lifted his head. He said, Tell me how much you want to give me. I said, 1500 a month. He said, I'm ready to take it to make sure your church grows. And when your church grows, you pray for me. Are you hearing me, somebody? He makes a way where there is no way. I come to declare over somebody here what you think is impossible. There is possibility in God. My Bible says He is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond our understanding. I'm speaking to 7,000 people right here. Are you hearing me, somebody? A year by this time, something will sit. A year by this time, something will break. A year by this time, somebody say fire. Somebody say fire. He was not a Christian. Otherwise, I would have thought maybe God touched his heart. He's a Muslim, smoking. And he shook my hand and said, young man, I want to give the place to you and lose out of business. And then he looked at me and said, 1,500, can you give a deposit? I said, no. And he said, when are you ready to start? I said, now. How much can you pay? I said, I don't have it. He said, tell me what you can do and start using it. I just want to make sure your church grows. When your church grows, pray for me. That's how we started. No furniture, no chair, no instrument, nothing. So the first meetings we had, it was a standing prayer meeting. You don't come to our church and sit down. And I told the people, the few people we had, I said, this place is prayer, um, prayer grounds. You don't sit. You have to stand. It's not that you, want, you, have, to, you have to stand. No, there was no chair because there was no money for any chair. So how come I get to this far and protocol is making me lose this faith to begin to now please people who want to see before they move? Are you hearing me? I didn't start seeing to move. I moved to see. I didn't see to move. Are you hearing me, somebody? So some of you have forgotten when you didn't have a visa how god miraculously gave you a visa when you didn't know who was going to marry you when you didn't think you would deliver when you didn't know when the next square me was coming from he made a way and today you have come this far you wake up in the morning and you are thinking if i don't work i can't eat and so your life is about your own your mind is controlling you and your logic is defining god god is bigger than your sense god is bigger than you. Oh my God, I feel something here. There is somebody here. The doctor said you can't deliver. There is somebody here. Men gave up on you. But the Bible said, I will look up onto the mountain. Where come my help? My help is from the Lord. The maker of the universe. There is somebody here. I prophesy. Before 2019 will end, heaven will open to you. I said heaven will open to you. Somebody say fire. Somebody Somebody's on fire. I don't like 
that diplomatic London attitude. We didn't come this far by logic. Are you hearing me? Thank God we had a little bit of book sense. We had a little bit of studies. But studies didn't bring me this far. There was no chairs in the church. There was no equipment. I used my voice. And it didn't bother me. You know why? In the bush in, in Ghana, I used to pray alone without an instrument. I used to do dumb broadcasting without instrument. And some people ask me, how do you do this? It looks like you never get tired. You preach morning, afternoon, and evening. Because I've been so trained. God took me in the bush. Dumb broadcasting in the morning. Preaching at the assembly. Break time uh, SU meeting. I didn't know all this stress was a training to preach three services in a day. What you're going through today is going to be the product of tomorrow. Are you hearing me, somebody? The suffering of today cannot be compared to the glory that is about to be unveiled tomorrow. Are you hearing me, somebody? Man of God, you are diligent in putting together a few people. And I can tell you, when God will bring the 7,000, it shall be easy because you've been diligent with little. I prophesy over your life. May heaven open to you. May the deal of heaven, oh my God. I prophesy over somebody. May wealth be your portion. May blessing be your portion. Every promise of the Lord. Every spoken word over your life. Every prophecy over your life. I command manifestation. I command manifestation in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Are you hearing me somebody? No chairs. We stood. And we prayed. No instruments. We stood. The first speakers we had as a church. I woke up in the morning and there was a young man who had just finished the university called Alex. That's Alex. Order speakers from the internet and tell them when they deliver, we pay them. So he ordered the instruments. I think it was 600 something. Two instruments. Two speakers. And a microphone. And he said, Pastor Evans, do you have a card? I said, which card? He said, is your bank card ready? I said, my bank card is here. He said, give it to me to order. I said, no problem. Do they want to take the money now? He said, they can take the money when they deliver. I said, that's good. As for card, I have it. Because you asked for bank card, you didn't ask for money. <laughs> so you know what your problem is? When you are looking for a job and they say bring your passport, because you don't have your immigration status, that limits you. What you don't know is that they didn't ask for your status, they asked for your passport. Take your passport. Faith doesn't make sense. I said to the young man, I said, I, I have a bank card. He used my bank card. And then he ordered. There was nothing in the bank card. God is my witness. So early in the morning, I said, when are they delivering? He said, they said they will deliver by 12 o'clock, between 12 and 2. So in the morning, 9 a.m., I put on my suit like everybody because I said to myself, well, I studied at the university. And all the people that I studied with, by this time, they should be at work. So all my friends, some are working at the bank, some are teaching, some are doing things. I am here saying that I'm a pastor. Let me also put on my suit, take my bag, 9 a.m., get to the office, and let God know that as others are working, I'm also working. And the liberal is worthy of his wages. I went in the morning to a small office we have created, no chair. And so when you get to the office, you have two options, either to pray standing or to kneel down praying or to sit down because there was no chair in the office anyway. So I took my books, took some bojo bojo bag I had, went to the office. Kalabahataya, Labarosata, Prados Kata, Lemahataya. Alice called me and said, 
pastor please they said they will deliver it i said okay that's fine magada hataya he said but they will take the money in cash when they come because if it's not on your car they will take it in cash i said that's good labranto kadaya parahasias rano kobo sada hataya the guys are coming but my prayer is getting intensified it's almost 12 o'clock and the guys have not arrived that's a blessing to god they have delayed so it's not my money that i've delayed kano imazana hataya i ran one something i heard somebody knocking at the office i opened the door it was a dark woman the woman is auntie harriet and it's a pastor evans i was driving past the thames road and something told me to come and when i woke up in the morning the lord said i should bless you he gave me an envelope and it was brown envelope when she left i opened the envelope it was 600 pounds the exact money we need to pay for the instrument are you hearing me somebody the moment the woman left and it wasn't long the people came they rang the bell and they said we came to deliver the equipment and when they finished i gave them the envelope and the money all together ladies and gentlemen my god is more than able are you hearing me somebody so when i talk about faith it's not a slogan faith is a lifestyle the just shall live by faith are you hearing me somebody it's not by might it's not by power but by my spirit says the lord if you can pray the yoke will break if you can pray there'll be breakthrough if you can pray miracles will happen if you can pray god will do it he's not after your faith he's not after your holiness he's not after your works if only you can believe him all things are possible are you hearing me somebody i'm reading my word and the bible said without faith it's impossible to please god i I taught without holiness. I taught without being a good man. I taught without going to church. But the Bible said without faith. Are you hearing me somebody? And Jesus said, if your faith is like a master seed, you will say to this mountain, be thou removed and it shall be removed. I don't know the mountain in your life, but if you got the faith, the mountain shall be removed. The mountain of barrenness, the mountain of poverty, the mountain of struggle the mountain of delay who art thou O great mountain thou shall be made how is your prayer life do you really have a prayer life the honest truth is that we talk about prayer but we don't have time for prayer i can boldly tell you i'm a pastor we do church all the time but the three hour service 15 minutes opening prayer 40 minutes praise and worship one hour preaching Two hours, two, 20 minutes, announcement, benediction, go home. There is no prayer in that service. I hear me. Even when we come for prayer meetings like this, oneness in prayer, you can realize that before you are living here, you prayed less than 30 minutes. Because you did t- five minutes, 10 minutes opening prayer. And then you did praise and worship. And then there was all kind of talk. Then the preacher came to preach for long. And then before he realized, let's go home. Ladies and gentlemen, you need prayer time. That's why the church is not making impact. Because it's not even your willingness to evangelize. I've come to realize without prayer, evangelism doesn't work. When I came into this country, ladies and gentlemen, I didn't come here knowing anybody. The Lord said, go. My spiritual father said to me, he said, Evans, your gift will make a way for you. I didn't know anybody in London. I didn't know anybody in London. I had no party. I didn't know anybody. I had a visa, two years working permit. When I applied for the visa, I needed a bank statement. And my uncle said, my bank statement had 10 million. 10 million at the time was less than 200 pounds. And it's not something you can take a visa with. And my uncle said, that's all I have. And I took that and I said, it's okay. I would use that. I took that and thinking they'll give me six months, they gave me two years and it was a work permit. So my journey is a journey of faith. Now I'm coming to England and I don't know anybody. And three days before my trip, my uncle said, there is a customer who used to come to our bank. My my uncle is a banker. 
He said, when I was working at Liberty House, there was a man in London. Let me try if I can have his number, if he can host you for a week. The man said, well, if he's only coming for a week, it's okay. Then the man called back and said, I can take him for one month. And then the man called and said, if it's two months, it's okay. I'll find him a job. So that's a miracle. The man picked me. I arrived here 6 a.m. The man picked me 5.46 p.m. Stayed at Gatwick for almost eight hours. While I was at Gatwick, I was like a madman walking around. Lord, I take over the land. Kalabashanda. Talabadaya. Because I've read in the Bible that the people of Israel, they walk around the, the walls of Jeru, uh, Jericho and they were taken. So that was my scripture. I was walking at Gatwick, taking over the land. If you see me like a madman, I was walking around for hours. Maybe God allowed that so I could pray over the land. It's praying. The man took me into the room. Three days time, the man got me a job. And then when he got me the job, slate green, I went there. I was supposed to be cleaning the office of those who drive the train. And when I entered the office, I smelled smoke. And that time, I was, I was very, very naive, very raw. When I smelled the smoke, I said, no, I'm a Christian. I can't work here. And what made it worse? They said, you have to work on Sunday. I said, never. I came back to the man. I said, Sunday is impossible because I have to be in church. The man said, this is not Ghana. You cannot do this here. I said, Sunday is not possible. So are you not going for the work? He said, no, I'm not. I don't think I want to work on Sunday. The man didn't say anything. Early Monday morning, he wake up. He said, you have one week to leave this place. Find a place. If you're not working on Sunday, I can't be paying your rent for you. Find a place. Where am I going? Knowing nobody. And I was flipping through my books. And I realized I have a primary school friend who had a sister who used to be in London. And the sister's number was in my book. So I called the number. And the sister said, who is this? I said, Evans. And he said, where are you? I said, I'm in London. He said, since when? I said, I came a few days ago. He said, Wow. My husband had a dream. And we don't understand the dream. So he gave the phone to the husband. And I interpreted the dream. And the husband said, can you come to our house? So I went to the house on Thursday. I went to the house in the afternoon. And then they had invited their pastor. And when their pastor came, we were praying. And God showed me a vision. And I spoke to the pastor. And he said, can you preach on Sunday in our church? And the sister said, can you go and bring your things and come and stay with us? So I came back Saturday to the man's house and I said, I want to move. And he said, where are you going? I said, I found a place. He said, the one week is not up. I said, but I found a place. That's how come I got on this grounds. This God have you in hands. Before the enemy checked you out, he's launched you in. We read the Bible, but we don't live the Bible. We talk the Bible, but we don't manifest the Bible. May you come to a place where nothing is able to crush your faith. May you come to a place that man cannot limit what God wants to do with you. There are some of you, God stays in heaven and cry because the mega things he wants to do with your life, your lack of faith is crushing it. Are you hearing me, somebody? You've forgotten when you have no husband, how you used to have it, how you used to work, how things used to work for you. And now everything is limited to your husband. There is no problem having a husband, but your husband cannot be your God. Your wife cannot be your God. Are you hearing me, somebody? I come to tell somebody the same yesterday, the same today, the same forever. There are some of you hearing the sound of my voice. If only you can lose out of your common sense, you will see the power of God at work. Let me talk to you for a little bit, then we pray. That man is not from God. Look at the way he's slapping people. Look at the way he's doing things. Now, he is not having your hermeneutics and ethics and code of conduct and everything. But one thing is clear. He has uncommon faith. He believes in all his foolishness that God is more than able. With all your intelligence, you still have doubt and your operations are not according to faith. So you are gentle, you are calculative, you are intelligent, but no outcome. That man has never been to school. 
but the crowd will follow are you hearing me ladies and gentlemen sometimes it's so amazing to see certain people that have results and if you're not careful you will judge the holy ghost some of us we can blame people that man of god it doesn't look like he's from god look at the way he's doing it but ladies and gentlemen who made you a judge and who made you think that you are from god the fact that you disobey god the greatest sin is not when you sleep with a woman the greatest sin is not when you smoke the bible says they never enter the promised land because of their unbelief so unbelief is a hindrance are you hearing me somebody unbelief is dangerous like an adultery unbelief is much damaging than anything you can imagine there are some of you you never smoke you never drink you never womanize you never manize but there is doubt in your heart and the bible says he that doubt is like a wave he shouldn't expect any good thing god want to lift you but your doubt is bringing you down god want to bless you but your doubt is making it impossible i pray for you when you live here may you cross the limit i said may you cross the limit you will cross the financial limit you will cross the immigration limit you will cross the emotional limit you will cross the mental limit every limit on your family may you receive an anointing to cross every limit on your life i prophesy you will marry without sweat i prophesy you will break through without limitation are you hearing me somebody i don't care the house i don't care the car i don't care the cost if you believe all things are possible so now let me talk to you let me talk to you please i'm sharing with humility not arrogance i'm sharing with humility every step of the way has been by faith i remember the first flat i bought i was there one of the members called me and said pastor there are new houses around here it was back in the area and they are selling it i said how much he said i don't know i said do you want some he said yes i said so how come you didn't ask he said i don't have the money he said give me the contact i took them i called the man said the houses are going for um, two hundred thousand. do you want it i said yes because the question he asked is do you want it pay attention to details And he said, we can book appointment for you to come to the showroom. I said, okay. So they booked the appointment. And I went. He said, it's 200,000. Do you have everything? I said, yes. At that time, I was doing my master's. And I was, I was having a part-time teaching job. And so my salary for the month was around 700. That's at the time. And said, so the house is 200. I said, no discount. He said, well, when they do the valuation, they can tell. I said, that's fine. Do you have your document? I say yes. Do you have this? I say yes. Do you have this? I say yes. Can we start the process? I say yes. Right. The things, can we? Yes, you can. Why not? <laughs> After all, God said, open your mouth wide. I'll fill it. So that's all I know. And I, I'm sharing some stuff with you. I had no money. Imagine, I was, I was studying my master's. I was doing MBA at the time. Where am I going to find the money? The money is not there, but the faith is available. The God that gave me a stay in London is more than able to give me a place to lay my head. And the year prior to that, I had been prophesying in all the regime churches that I've been preaching that God said next year people will buy their houses. I said, why can I be giving the prophecy and not be a partaker of the prophecy? Now, long story short, he said, do you have a deposit? I said, no. He said, we can do, um, they, were, they had some scheme to put down whatever the percentage of your deposit. I said, that's good. In three weeks, the key was in my hands. I entered the house as a landlord for the first time in London when I don't have a penny. And the guy that called me and gave me the number said, Pastor, you bought the place? I said, yes. What's the procedure? I said, me, I don't know. I don't know. Praise the Lord. Because the man took the telephone and mistakenly asked me, do you want it? And I said, yes. So heaven sealed it. And I, I'm talking to you about read things. Read things. Now, when you can stretch your faith, forget your budget. I 
Am I talking to somebody here? Faith is madness in display. Madness in display. I said to my wife last year, I said, something has struck my heart. Every year we must buy houses. So if you check our church team, the team for the year is possessing the land. I know the members took the, the message, but they didn't know the intensity. So they'll go to another 31st night and nothing is happening. And they'll say, well, nothing is working in our life. Nothing will work because coming to church doesn't make things work. The garage is meant for cars. But the fact that somebody slept in the garage never made them a car. You can be in church and an anointing and nothing is working in your life. You must have a revelation to connect to the anointing available. And I said to my wife, I said, every year we must buy houses. This year we bought three houses already. Yes. No sweat. My church doesn't pay me. Now somebody will say, how does he do it? I don't know. When I get the word, I just believe it. My son never has asked me my balance in my account. But my son placed a demand on me every day. Daddy, buy me this. Yes, I'll buy it. Daddy, give me this. Yes, I'll give it. My son never woke up in the morning and said, Mom, do you have a balance in your account that we can eat? He's never asked the mom whether you have money. Every day my son asks. So I am a child of God. Every day I must ask. Your problem is that you're looking at your limitation as God's limitation. So you deal with God on the basis of your weakness and your limitation. God is saying, I am not limited by what limits you. I am not limited by what limits the lawyer. I'm not limited by what limits your doctor. I am God all by myself. All I need is your belief. Are you hearing me? Your belief is an authority figure in my life that you have granted me access to make things work. I came to tell somebody here, if you can believe, the Bible said to them that believe all things, not some things. From today, whatever is dying in your life, I command resurrection in the mighty name of Jesus. May your ministry come alive. May your fa family come alive. May your marriage come alive. May your finances come alive. Are you hearing me, somebody? I came to prophesy upon somebody. May things come alive inside of you. I, 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 I declare over your life that death shall resurrect. Your dead finance shall resurrect. Your dead faith shall resurrect. Your dead beliefs shall resurrect. I prophesy. May your children come alive. Allah One day David was running from Saul. Running from place to place. And yet even though he had no place to lay the head. He wrote in the Psalms. He said bless the Lord oh my soul. And all that is within me. What was David talking about? He was in the cage of Adullam and he was still blessing the Lord for everything in him. He was not talking about the intestine. He said, Solomon, you are already in me. Shama, you are already in me. I am running for my life, but I know one day my children are already in me. All of you join me. Let's praise the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul and all that is within me. There is somebody here. You don't have a house. You don't have a job. You don't have a stay. But God has promised you. And the Bible says faithfully see that promise. And he also will honor his word. May the word of God come alive. I said may the word of the Lord come alive. Everything God has said. May it happen according to his word. Are you hearing me somebody? I pray for you today. Whatever is impossible. Receive possibility. Receive possibility. Praise the Lord. Somewhere this year, I realized that my son was not speaking. And because I'm always busy, I've not really checked it. So I came home one of the times and I asked my husband, Why is Vanessa not speaking? How old is he? He said, Three. Ah, how? He said, They said his speech. Speech. Your father talks for a living. How can speech be your problem? I went back to church and prayed all night long. When I came, he was sleeping. I took him 
in his sleep. I opened his mouth. I threw saliva in. The following morning, he started speaking. It's not a doctor issue. Your father talks for a living, so speak shouldn't be a problem. Listen to me. Church is not school. Church is faith. Praise the Lord. When you get to a place of predicting God, you have lost him. Sometimes people may think it's arrogant when you talk it this way. But faith doesn't make sense. Jesus said, tear the temple down in three days. It shall be built. They say, blasphemous. Yeah. Hear this. You are too logical and too intelligent to see the move of God. How do you tell a barren woman that you're going to deliver when they know they have no womb? It doesn't make common logic sense. That's why things are not happening in your life. You know your account is empty and your salary. As a matter of fact, the miracle you want to see, the things you want to do, and the salary you're earning, if you're not an arm robber, it won't happen. Are you hear me? Hear this. Get to a place where all you see is faith. Why do we pray? So we can believe. Staying in church all year without faith is a waste of your time. Prayer is meant to activate faith. Prayer is not a hobby. Prayer is a lifestyle. The only language heaven hears is faith language. And prayer is a faith language. Magadahaya. Gondevadish. Kone Madaya. It's not taught at the lecture rooms. Ragane Mazuas. Magom Vahaya. Kilindos. Prahandias. Lemando ne Mahaya. Kabahaya. My mind doesn't even understand. That's why it's only mad people that can do this. You're speaking a language you don't understand. And you're talking it boldly as if the thing works. And a white logical man stands there and says, what are you doing? I'm praying. What does it mean? I don't know. And then the doctor who is so intelligent is watching you and he's thinking, these people are mad. Yes, sir. This madness is the reason why the outcome in my life is still happening the way they are happening. Because my madness cannot be interpreted. Likewise, my results cannot be interpreted. Are you hearing me? I don't know. One day, they brought a man and they, they, they said to the man that Peter have healed you. What do you think about him? And he said, I don't know. All I know is that I was blind, but I can see. I can interpret what he did. I can interpret everything around the circumstance. I have no witness. But the only thing I know is that once upon a time, I couldn't see, but now I see. If you ask about me, I will say his methodology is good because it may not be good for you, but it has worked for me. Are you hearing me, somebody? Life is about outcome. Life is about resource. Life is not about opinion. It doesn't matter your opinion. It doesn't matter your, your certificate. It doesn't matter what you believe until there is resource. There is nothing that will be believed. If two men with faith now can build a tower. Faith is when you make up your mind that heaven should take over. And when you make up your mind, no principality. I've got to a place I don't really deal with principalities and powers, you know, because my faith level is too high. It's one of the greatest gifts God has ever given me is a gift of faith. Amen. How do you put David before Goliath? And yet David said, don't worry. This boy shall be made like a dog. And they'll put the armor on David and he said, no, I'm not used to this. I'm just used to believing him. I'm not used to this technique. Sir, it works for you, but it doesn't work for me. 
I don't doubt it working for you, but it doesn't work for me. I pray for somebody here this year will end you well. I said this year will end you well. Now, look, time will not permit me. I can share with you testimony upon testimony that prayer and faith move things. My first son, they diagnosed him of epilepsy. My first son used to faint about 15 times in a day. And I leave him and go and preach. And one day we had gone to the hospital. Every hospital in London with all the experts tried it. From London Bridge to everywhere. So we went to Southern Hospital. And the doctor gave all kinds of medicine. And I was curious. So I asked the doctor, please, doctor, how long is the boy going to take this? Roughly. And the doctor said, I don't know. You have to try it. If it works, it works. Then that got me angry. Because I realized that my grandfather was a Curtis priest. My grandfather could stand in the middle of the village and throw challenge to witches. And nobody can touch my grandchildren. My grandfather was not a preacher. My grandfather was not a Christian. My grandfather was a Curtis priest who was a hunter. And was so powerful. That while he lived, he openly threw challenges and warnings to demons not to touch his son or his grandchildren. And he was a demon possessed himself. And that got me angry. And I remembered how powerful my grandfather was. He came from the hospital. He said, Esther, you can't give the medicine to the boy. He said, you know this country, if you don't, they can see you. I said, let them see me. I said, my grandfather lived in the village of Ghana, Kotra. We live in that bush. And my grandfather never saw hospital. My grandfather never prayed in tongues. He never saw Jesus. He never went to, he never knew anything about church. And yet my grandfather was able to protect all of us. How come my son is this sick? I'm preaching and my son is dying and I can't do anything. I said, from today, don't give the medicine. If God will let him die, let him die because he gave him. Now, ladies and gentlemen, God is my witness. Two and a half years now, my son totally recovered without an iota of medicine. And the doctor said, Mr. Paul, how is he doing? I said, he's totally healed. He said, yes, we've not had any report for two and a half years. I said, how was the medicine? I said, the honest truth is we didn't give it. He said, how did he get healed? I said, we believed in God. Amen. Amen. Demons tremble at your presence. When, when your son is sick, the first is ambulance. Because that's where your belief is. The Christian mother would have faith. The Christian father would have faith. You are in church every day. So no wonder our children don't want to come to church. Because the you have said in the book of Judges, if God is with us, where are all the miracles our fathers told us of? Our fathers told us he was a miracle worker. But in days we have not seen it until our children begin to experience the miracle working power of our God. They cannot follow our God because our God has done nothing to prove himself to be God. Ladies and gentlemen, come to the pieces. That your son will not be tested. Not because, because you put it into church, church, but because they experience God. Are you hearing me, somebody? Are you hearing me, somebody? The Bible says, God said, I will take him. He will command his children to follow. I pray for you today. May your acts be the acts of faith. May there be practical results in your life. You will get to your workplace, the same place everybody hates you. And in 24 hours, there will be a divine turn around. I said, there will be a divine turn around. Some of you are about to own the house you live in. Why you are tenant right now? You are about to be the possessor. I hear the Lord say to Israel, He said the land you used to rent as a stranger, I have already given it to your fathers. I pray for you today. You will be an owner. You will be an occupier. You will be a possessor. You are not a stranger. Are you here me, somebody? Put me in Afghanistan. I will still make it. I got a case in my hand. I got a revelation in my spirit that the devil is a liar. I don't know what you're dealing with, but it's a possibility. My 
brother is not late. Your vision will not die. Your dreams will not die. I, 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 God brought you this far not to put you to shame. God brought you this far not to embarrass you. It shall be well with your life. It shall be well with your family. It shall be well with your marriage. It shall be well with your finances. Are you hearing me, somebody? Once has he spoken, twice is he heard that all power belongs to God. Who am I talking to right now? Somebody shall power. Somebody shall power. answer to followers and competitors. Mm. The game of life answers to participants. Is there any tangible results in your life? Yeah. Are you hearing me? Now, then he said, the lion appeared, I killed it. A bear came, I killed it. That is enough faith for Goliath. Mm. Are you hearing me? Yes. Yeah. We can prophesy from morning to night, but until you get to the realm of faith. Now, I am a prophet. I love prophecy. So we speak so many things, and it's accurate, but you still don't have results. Are you? The prophecy is accurate. It's accurate. It's on point, but there is no results. The Bible says that the same message was preached, but they did not miss it with faith. They did not miss it with faith. This is. The victory that overcame the world, even our faith. Hear this. I don't know which mountain you see, but every mountain is climbed up with faith. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sir, I was a math teacher at Forest Gate School. And when I started teaching, I was very naive in experience. I was in experience at all. And uh, one morning, my head of department called me, Mr. Zaman. I shared this testimony over and over. Mr. Zaman calls me and said, Mr. Evans, um, the head teacher have told me we have to lay one of the mass teachers redundant because uh, we don't need them. I said, okay. Now, all truth and honesty. If they are supposed to lay anybody, it's me. And that's not biasness at all. Because I just started. I was an experience. The mass teacher next to me was Mr. Ahmed from Bangladesh. He used to help me do my lesson plans and all that. He used to help me to teach him. My head of department, Mr. Zaman, is also from Bangladesh. They are all Muslims. They pray together on his break time. So the head, the head of department calls me and says, Mr. Evans, and so looking at the way things are, we would have to let you, so don't, let, don't be surprised. I said, okay. As a matter of fact, I wasn't disappointed in him because was honest. Now he put the telephone down and I was just there. I just assessed the house I told you about and there was no bed in there. There was nothing. When I acquired the house, I said to myself, until we put the house of God together, I will use my money to buy nothing. So there was nothing. Now ladies and gentlemen, long story short, the man calls again and said, Mr. Evans, last night I couldn't sleep. I keep seeing you in my dream. When you come to school today, the head teacher will ask you these three questions, give him these answers. He said, but because of the things I'm seeing in my dream, I get scared, so I want you to still be in the school. And guess who they lay off? My mentor, who teaches me and helps me to survive in the school, was the one they laid off. In as much as I had a miracle, I had pain in my heart because he's the same person helping me out. God said, I will sacrifice nations for you. Amen. Look, stop church. The thing is not church. There is a man you get into God. You don't need a pastor. You need your faith. Amen. Are you watching me? By this time, and I say this boldly everywhere I 
By this time, if all of us here have enough faith, we can take over the city. You know why? If you have faith, turn now, what do you do? Let's run. How many years did you attend the university? Four years. What do you do, sir? How many years did you attend the university? Four plus two. Now, hear this. Somebody studies at the university for four years. He's a lecturer of law. For three years, he's a nurse. For seven years, he's a medical doctor. You've been in church for 12 years. You still can't deal with demons. You still can't take dominion and possession. You still can't be a mentor and a teacher. Something is wrong. There is no school that have enough time to teach than the church. Midweek service, Friday or my Sunday service. There is no lecturer that have direct access with students like pastors do with the church. And yet the church is not moving. You watch services upon services, YouTube services. You watch all the men of God, all the men he did this, prophet counsel and everybody. And yet you are not able to deal with some things. There is something wrong with the church. He's able to operate human being and bring them from dead to life as a medical doctor. After the years, you can trust them with your immigration case as a lawyer. After the years, they are midwives that are taking care of your baby when you're delivering. You've been a believer for 12 years. Some of you all your life. Some of you for 20 years you've been Christian. Some of you for 7 years you have been a believer. And yet, we come to church and we have all the fights and all the arguments, including church elders and church ministers and pastors, and we are fighting in the house, and the house divided amongst the soldiers. No wonder no that things are happening because you're refusing to grow, you're refusing to take your life in your hands, you're refusing to take dominion, and the devil is not afraid because you're in the church. Frustration about church people, and church leaders. So sometimes those who will be for you for long are those who will even fight them more. And you wonder how long is it going to take this generation to grow? Jesus stayed with the disciples for three and a half years. And the Bible said Peter will speak and 5,000 people will give their life to Christ. After three and a half years, an ordinary fisherman who had never been to school was able to establish church order and church structure in an extent that Peter said, let's give their lives and their commitment to the people and we can give ourselves to prayer because he has never been to school but what they are not taking comes on your life is not about academics. What they are not taking comes on your life there is divine wisdom. Are you hearing me, somebody? When the anointed comes on your life. By this time, we will still struggle for people to give, give tithe. We will still struggle for people to give offering. We will still struggle for people to come to church. We will still have to call people. And when you're in a place like London, where you have to be testing people and, and lobbying them and, and try to call everybody before they come here, how many people can you call for them to appear in the service? One day, I used to be very frustrated. And the Lord said to me, he said, son, call and test and following these people cannot build a church. He said, believe in me and I will build my church. Are you hearing me? That's someone last year and I began to see growth in our church as never before because you're always trying to you're always trying to help people pity them and trying to do things for them to say and God said how many people can you call in a day even if you're a communication center operator how many people ladies and gentlemen we need a move of the Holy Ghost are you hearing me somebody we need a move of the Holy Ghost the elders will appear things will appear I pray for you today may there be an anointing of attraction anointing that make kings run to you anointing that make relevant people run to you anointing to draw a husband anointing to draw helpers anointing to draw business partners anointing to draw relevant men and women into your life are you hearing me somebody enough of the lobby enough of the begging thou anointing
anoints my head with oil. My cup runneth over surely. Your goodness and your mercy, they shall follow me. When you live oneness prayer, goodness will follow you. When you live this gathering, mercy shall follow you. When you live this gathering, there will be a prevailing grace over your life, over your family, over your children. Ayaya, Palosa, Pahanda, Agone, Madum, Brataya, Ayakone, Madaya, Palus, Rondo, Kone, Madaya. I feel some unction right here. I pray for you. Your ministry will change. Your singing ministry will change. Your prophetic grace will change. Your pastoral anointing will set. I see your business mind is getting to another level. Young woman, get ready. You are the pioneer of your family. I see some root getting in contact with the Boaz. I see helpers coming. I see destiny helpers. I see world changes. I see opportunities coming into your life. Are you here?